11, 10, 9. Gotta use the CNC. So this project started out as a lot of shop projects do by befriending a CNC router and cutting down sheets of plywood into manageable chunks and these manageable chunks eventually became the legs to the CNC table. But before we get further into cutting up these rough parts, let's talk about the design for a minute. With Chris and I combining shops recently, we've been doing a lot of reorganizing and it's become apparent there's a need for some new shop furniture, which is something neither of us have ever really enjoyed making. So we decided to make shop furniture that we actually enjoy making, if that makes sense. For this one, I wanted to do three things. I wanted to give the piece some sort of interesting design. I wanted to add a bit of color and I wanted the table to be useful when we weren't using the CNC machine, which is honestly how it'll be probably 90% of the time. So once I had all of my leg parts cut to rough dimension, I could then employ Craig to help a bit with making his new home. This is Craig, by the way, our Inventables X-Carve. He does good work, so he cut a couple templates to help me get the shape of the legs right. The nice part about this process is that I'm able to pull SVG files from my Fusion 360 model, then import them directly into Easel, and I can have a template cut in minutes. For this one, instead of cutting large templates for the whole leg sections, I cut a couple smaller templates that I could just move around my leg blanks to get the final shape. And once I had everything marked out, I could cut in some dominoes for the joinery, which I did before cutting the curves just to be sure I had plenty of material to reference. With those finished, I took everything to the bandsaw to rough cut the curves just outside of my pencil line. From there, I could glue up the leg assemblies, which consisted of the rough cut curved vertical parts and the straight horizontal sections, which had been cut to size on the table saw. With the four rough cut leg assemblies glued up, and I did four because I wanted to double up the thicknesses, or as we in the biz say, the thick nigh of each leg, I could then flush trim all the curved sections using my template and a router, which I did on only two of the leg assemblies. With two of the leg assemblies to their finished shape, I could then glue them to the two remaining and still oversized leg assemblies, then flush trim using the first leg assembly as my template. With the legs done, it was time to start making the two shelves. One that would hold the CNC machine, and one that would be the hinged upper tabletop. I wanted the tables to be fairly sturdy and to stay as flat as possible, 
so I reinforced each one with some two inch wide strips of plywood. I made the two shelves identical except for the upper top which needed to have the sides inset by the thickness of the leg assemblies so that when closed the top could rest on the tops of the legs. With both of these finished I could then attach the lower shelf to the leg assemblies then make a couple backing boards to add a bit more rigidity to the whole piece. So with the table pretty much done, the last thing to work on was the drawer storage underneath the bottom shelf. So I started by attaching two side panels to the legs to mount the drawer slides to. Oh, and I also painted everything orange. What's with the orange? Take it easy, Brad Pitt. I just like oranges, okay? Anyway, let's talk about this month's featured viewer project, which comes from Eric Scoggin. Eric made this awesome sofa table, which he's dubbed the Lockdown Corner Table. It's made from extra Ipe flooring and some Douglas fir beams. And like Eric says, it solves a common problem with large sectional sofas perfectly. If you wanna see more pictures and read more about this piece, go check out our website, which we'll link to in the description. We're going to be featuring a new project each month and we're happy to be using Squarespace to help us build the website. Both Chris and I have been using Squarespace to build and maintain our websites for years now. And honestly, it's one of the best choices I made when starting my business. At the time, I had no idea what I needed to do to build a website, but Squarespace makes it super easy to get up and running with plenty of professional looking templates to choose from, as well as making things like purchasing domains really simple. Squarespace also has plenty of e-commerce tools to help you grow your business, things like inventory management, a simple and secure checkout process, and unlimited products allow you to easily manage online transactions and not get bogged down with mundane tasks so that we can devote more time to doing the things we enjoy, like making cool shop furniture or fancy corner sofa tables. So if you're thinking about starting a website, or even if you already have one, go check out Squarespace to see if it might be a better option for you. Head over to squarespace.com slash four eyes for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, use the offer code four eyes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, thanks Squarespace. And if you wanna have one of your projects featured, check out the link in the description. From there, I could build the actual drawer boxes, which I kept very simple for this build. I made them out of plywood and assembled them with screws. You can see here that I added in some spacers between the drawer slides and the side panels. This was to compensate for the material limitations I had when making the drawer boxes, which ended up being not quite wide enough to span the entire width of the opening. Or I accidentally made them too small. I'll let you decide.
With the drawers done and installed, I could install the drawer poles and a long piano hinge on the back of the top table. Finally, we wanted to add some organization since there are plenty of small CNC parts to keep track of, and these Rockler lock align drawer organizers did the trick. Alright, there it is. This should end up being a super useful piece for us to have in the shop. Having the usable space above the CNC will be great and having extra drawer storage is always helpful. Okay, thank you as always for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one. And of course, until next time, if you're ever looking to make some cool shop furniture and you want to paint it orange, just remember that you can Nothing rhymes with orange. <laughs>